All right, what's up everybody? Here we go. Foolery, God's message, method, and mandate, part two. And we are gonna jump into the word. I hope this is really speaking to you. Uh, this is something God's really placed on uh, Crystal Gale and my heart and something we feel for the Hopeland community, whether you're a part of our community digitally uh, or, or you're literally part of our community here in the local um, uh, location of our brick and mortar building. Um, our heart is that we, uh, in this season, um, remind our community and remind people of God that this thing called faith in Christ is simple. It is not complicated, complex, or confusing. And there's a simplicity in Christ. We want to continue to, um, you know, uh, preach and teach, and I feel responsibility to, to just, uh, hopefully this helps kind of clear out the clutter of, of, of things and, and circumstances and the complexity of what's in life and just clear out our faith and say, man, let's just keep this thing simple, okay? Let, let's just encourage our community uh, in the simplicity of Christ, and that is foolishness to the world but that's all right. I don't mind being a fool for Christ um, and having a simplicity of faith and a simplicity um, uh, and simplicity of a relationship with God. So here we go. Let's, let's jump into this. Um, if you wanna turn in your Bibles to Proverbs chapter nine, verse 10, and then we're gonna go to 1 Corinthians two, verse six. And so let me pray and then we'll jump in. Father, we thank you for your word. I just pray for everybody joining in. God, that they just get revelation, that they get encouraged, that they get challenged, that, Father God, they receive uh, not only information, but spiritual revelation. They don't only receive, um, Lord, information, but impartation, that there's literally an impartation of the word and the spirit. It's the engrafted word, imparted word, engrafted, that's able to save our soul. I pray that happens to people today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, here we go. So this is what we're gonna talk about. Um, as you turn your Bibles to Proverbs chapter nine, verse 10, we're gonna talk about wisdom and just the two types of wisdom in the Bible. There's, there's earthly wisdom and there's godly wisdom. That's it, that's what we're talking about. And how, what, how do we obtain and walk in godly wisdom? Another way to say it, divine wisdom, all right? Uh, and, and, and how do we stay away from and, and refuse um, uh, earthly wisdom, you know, the Bible associates um, a wisdom that's not of God. It's it's earthly, it's sensual, and even the Bible talks about, and we'll read this scripture later, it's it's demonic. And so there's a simplicity that, that comes with the wisdom of God, divine wisdom, and, and we're gonna we're gonna look at that. And then there's also um, a different type of wisdom that is complicated and complex and distorted and twisted. And that is what we don't want to operate in our life. Two types of wisdom. Here we go. Um, and so uh, Proverbs chapter nine, verse 10, it says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. This is the type of wisdom we want. I'm gonna read it again. Proverbs chapter nine, verse 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Here's, here's the next one, 1 Corinthians 2, verse six, and then we'll talk about these two. This is a different type of wisdom right here. Um, 1 Corinthians 2, verse six. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature. That's the good kind of wisdom. That's the divine wisdom. That's the godly wisdom. That's the wisdom that's from above, all right? Yet not the wisdom of this age or of this world or worldly wisdom, okay? Uh, nor of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. And so there's a wisdom from God that will produce fruit in our life. And there's a wisdom of the world and approach toward life that's of the world. It's earthly, sensual, demonic, and it's not from above. That will uh, bring us and our efforts to nothing. Okay, so we wanna do this here. We want godly wisdom. So here it is, here's my first point. I've already said it, but I just wanna 
put it up here so you can follow. There, there is a divine wisdom and there's earthly wisdom, okay? There's two, all right? There is two, all right? So here we go. Um, next one, godly wisdom begins with worship. It says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. This is foolishness to the world that if I worship God and reverence God, I will receive supernatural wisdom. That is foolishness to this world, okay? But I'm here to tell you right now, it's really that simple. If you need wisdom in your life and understanding and counsel and how do I navigate life? How do I navigate this relationship? How do I walk through the difficulties and complexities of my career and education and the people out that's in my life and in my world? How do I, how do I walk through the difficulties of transition in life? And how do I deal even in ministry, those out there that really feel called to do full-time ministry, how do I navigate this? I'm here to tell you right now, there is godly wisdom for you and it's gonna begin with the fear of the Lord. That um, is the way we obtain wisdom in the kingdom of God is having a heart of worship. The word fear means reverential awe. It is, and it is, it is a word that, that exemplifies, it's a phrase, fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is, is worship, it's reverence, it's not fear like I'm scared of God, it's fear I am in awe of God. It's fear I respect and honor and, and, I, and, and I reverence God. That right there begins wisdom. God will download wisdom into you because godly wisdom begins with worship, all right? So however we speak, and I'm gonna read it again, 1 Corinthians 2, 6. We, two, six, we speak wisdom among those who are mature. Why? Because you have to be in the presence of God to really receive divine wisdom. You have to be a worshiper. If you want divine wisdom in your life, you will not obtain it by reading a bunch of books and, and, and figuring out tools and ways and, 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 and tactical ways and, and schemes and this and that. There's nothing wrong with learning. I'm not taking away from that, but foolery, God's message and method and, and God's mandate is this. If you want divine wisdom and you want to operate in the kingdom of God, in supernatural wisdom, you want to operate in life with supernatural wisdom, godly wisdom, wisdom from above, divine wisdom, it's going to start with worship. If you're not a worshiper, you will be in want of wisdom. If you're not one that says, man, I'm going to honor God with my life, wisdom will not be found. Wisdom will not be obtained. Wisdom comes in God's kingdom because we're worshipers. God doesn't give us wisdom because we quote unquote want it so we can achieve things and achieve status. That is not divine wisdom. Divine wisdom comes when we're in reverential fear of the Lord. That the Bible says, here it is, the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. So here we go. Here we're just talking about these two types of wisdom here. One, one is foolishness to the world and the other is foolishness to God. So earthly wisdom is humanistic. It starts with me and my effort and what I want and who I am and what I want to achieve. It starts with me, okay? It focuses on self and not on God, all right? It gets complicated. It gets confusing, all right? And, and, and so wisdom from a kingdom perspective begins with honoring God for who he is. And, and the world doesn't see that. You mean to tell me, Pastor Sean, that if I honor and worship God, I will receive divine wisdom in every aspect of my life? Yes, because the Bible says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You can't obtain wisdom in God's kingdom if you're not a worshiper, if you don't give God praise, if you're not honoring him with your life. I'm telling you right now, I'm telling you right now, there's people that, that, are pro that, that could potentially be the least educated, the, the, you know, or, or just don't have uh, come from a certain pedigree in this natural world, but because they're worshipers, they have divine wisdom. Because they're worshipers, they know how to operate in life in a way that is beyond this natural world, all right? So, so when we humbly walk with God, we walk in divine wisdom. It is God's method of wisdom. Here it is, here it is. I'm kind of jumping ahead of myself, but I just want to say this, that wisdom, divine wisdom really isn't about wisdom. Um, supernatural wisdom from above that comes from God, godly wisdom, isn't even about wisdom. It's about worship. 
Because if you worship, you'll obtain wisdom. Our life isn't about wisdom. Our life is about worship. And if we worship, we get wisdom. Wisdom in the kingdom of God is the result of worship, not the other way around. All right, here it is. One more thought here uh, before we kind of continue to move on here. Um, Earthly wisdom is about obtaining things and achieving status, which is pride. But once again, when we humbly walk with God, we will walk in divine wisdom. Godly wisdom is a divine resource for those that live to bring God glory. There it is. I'm telling you right now. It, you know, you ever approach a situation and you're like, man, I need some wisdom here. Can you pray for wisdom? Nothing wrong with asking for wisdom. God says, Bible says you ask for it, God will give it to you, right? But there it is. Even, even in that scripture, in, in the book of James, you know, if anyone lacks, lacks, lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. What? Because wisdom is, a, is about your relationship with God. I'm, I'm here to tell you right now, um, we, we, you can have practical uh, ability to do things and just understanding. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but divine godly wisdom is different. It's because you're a worshiper, okay? And it's God's resource to worshipers, all right? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of, of wisdom. Godly wisdom is more about a lifestyle that is pleasing to God. When you're pleasing to God, he's going to he's going to he's going to come into your life and begin to give you wisdom on how to navigate life in victory, in peace, in freedom and in joy. This places wisdom into the heart, mind in hands of worshipers. You you are worshipers in the earth are at an advantage. Those that honor God are at an advantage. Though, I I mean, God is gonna have your back. Seek first the kingdom of God. Somebody say worship and all these other things will be added. Our worship and honor of God is the focus and the other things are the result of the focus we place on him. See, earthly wisdom is more about, it's humanistic, it's more about being crafty and cunning and scheming to get things, and God says, seek me first, and you won't have to worry about things. You won't have to worry about favor. You won't have to worry about opportunity, but worship. Yeah, I know, here it is. Once again, simple. Be a worshiper. Fear the Lord and wisdom will be there. Wisdom will be there. Wisdom will be there. If we live to worship and love God, wisdom will be there, all right? All right, here we go. First Corinthians chapter one, verse 17, okay? It says, for Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, preach, the gospel, not with wisdom of words. There it is, another type of wisdom that's not of God. It's using words to sway and move people. It's it's natural, it's sensual, it's earthly, and it can be, if it's an extreme, demonic. It could be manipulative, all right? But that's what he's saying, man. We preach the gospel not with wisdom of words. We're coming from a different source lest the cross of Christ should be made of no effect. Now, I want to just give you the definition of wisdom here. It's the word Sophia. Anybody know anybody named Sophia? Or Sophos, that's, that's, it means wisdom, okay? And so it's pretty pretty basic understanding of the word and definition. It means intelligence, sophistication, philosophy. What's interesting, though, when you look at the word cunning in Scripture and schemes, it has the same definition, Okay? So, so when we worship, God gives us intelligence, sophistication, and, and ways to navigate things. It's when we place our intent on things and, and, and we're not honoring God and we, we focus on a wisdom from this world that really by definition means to be sinister, cunning, or crafty, okay? And so in 1 Corinthians, if you look at this letter, historically, 
the Apostle Paul was writing this letter because of divisions in the church, okay? And so he had to, he mentions the foolishness of the cross and so a lot in Corinthians. Why? Because there were people even in the church world that were operating in a certain way that was cunning, crafty, and deceitful, and selfish, and bringing confusion. So he's saying, look, and there was division. Like, who am I with? Am I with this spiritual leader or this leader? Am I with Apollos? Am I with Paul? There was division in the church. There was division. And worldly wisdom and approach that towards life it, it divides, okay? It, and so he's like, look, I didn't come to baptize because they're like, Did this, does this person supposed to baptize us or this person baptize us? Like, which one? We're with Paul, they're with Apollos. And it was division, earthly. Talking about leaders, like, like my association with this particular whatever uh, spiritual leader, pastor, whatever, it, it actually matters, really. And he's like, no, 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 no. Let, 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 let's push all this aside. I came to preach, Right, I came to preach, not with wisdom of words. I'm not trying, you know, I'm not coming to manipulate or to kind of coerce in a way, no, lest the cross of Christ should be made of no effect. The book of 1 Corinthians was written to a church to say, hey, let's simplify this here. Come on, let, let, let's get, let, let, I'm going to confront the division in this church. And you know what I'm saying? That's what the Apostle Paul was doing. And he's saying, let's get back to what really matters. Let's get back our focus to the simplicity of the cross. Okay, and so when, this is the thing, we see this a lot today, when, when our worldly wisdom divides us from other believers, we're literally treating the cross as valueless. We are devaluing the cross when our perspective and approach toward even ministry is a worldly wisdom approach. Okay, why? Because the cross reconciles us to God and it reconciles us to one another. So when we come with the, with the cunning craftiness of deceitful scheming, as the word says, worldly wisdom, even an approach towards ministry, it divides people. It puts people in, in categories that is earthly, sensual, and demonic. And the apostle Paul's like, look, I came to preach the gospel and, 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 and not with cunning craftiness. So the cross would be made of no effect. And that's what happens with worldly wisdom. All right, worldly wisdom, okay? And preaching is the heralding of the good news. And by definition, preaching is the declaration of the fundamentals of the gospel. That, it's, it's, the, it's the simplicity of the message that Jesus saves by grace through faith. He loves us. We love him as a result of us loving him and him loving us. We love one another. I mean, that's what he's preaching. Look, he even told this church, I desire to know nothing among you guys. You Corinthians, man, you're mixing it all up, bringing all this other garbage into the kingdom and separating people and identifying with certain people, but not with other certain people and this and that. He's like, look, I wish to know nothing among y'all except, except Jesus Christ and him crucified. That's it. Foolery, the simplicity, right, of God's message method and mandate. Here we go. 1 Corinthians 1, 18. 1, 18. Here it is. We're in Corinthians again. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is power of God. The cross, the cross. We got to get back to the cross. We got to run it through the cross. All right. Look, you hear a lot of talk about, man, you know, these people are woke. You know, we're woke. We're, we're aware you know, and here it is. Um, if our wokeness, I know that's not a word. Foolery is not a word and wokeness isn't either, right? I'm on, a, I'm on a good, I got a good track here with this, with this series. But if your wokeness alienates you, isolates you, and feeds your pride, you are caught up in something that is not of God. It is worldly wisdom and you will venture into a dark place. I'm here to tell you right now, right? I'm here to tell you right now that, that the wisdom of this world does never has a good, good result. It never has a good outcome, all right? If our wokeness alienates us, isolates us, and feeds our pride, right? We're caught up in something that is not of God, all right? Stop, stop, and go back to the cross, 
All right, think about this. Think about this. Let's go back to the garden, Adam and Eve, right? They had the knowledge. They had a tree called the knowledge of good and evil. And they had the tree of life. What did the devil want them to eat? Definitely didn't want them to partake of life, simplicity, life, partake of life. But no, knowledge of good and evil. The temptation was to be aware of something they weren't currently aware of. The temptation was to get woke. That was the temptation. The knowledge of good and evil. You will, you'll be like God. Like you're gonna know. You, you, God's not telling you everything. There's more to know. It was a temptation for greater knowledge. The Bible says that knowledge puffs up, but love edifies. Simplicity, simplicity, simplicity. All right. All right, simplicity, original sin happened because of the temptation of some worldly wisdom, some craftiness to, to know something. And when that's, and look, at it separated Adam from God. He said, Adam, where were you? It separated him from his wife because it was Adam by himself. Worldly wisdom divides and, and separates God's people from God and themselves. First Corinthians chapter one, verse 19. Let's go to verse 19. For it is written, I will destroy, strong words, I will destroy, that's some strong words, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, worldly wisdom, sensual wisdom, wisdom that is not from above, demonic wisdom, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Worldly wisdom always brings us to nothing, it brings us to nothing, it gets us nowhere, it gets us nowhere but wisdom from above, right? That's what we want. Another point, when it talks about destroy, Jesus said, for this purpose was the Son of God manifested that he might, what? Destroy the works of the devil. Destroy. I, God takes this very serious. I mean, this is the word here, destroy. I mean, destroy. Do away with, all right? Do away with worldly wisdom, manipulation. There is simplicity in your walk with God and it comes from a heart of worship. You will have all the, everything you have need of in God and in, in Christ with the simplicity of worship in your life. I understand we have to learn things. I'm not taking away from that, but this is the point is when we begin to lean on that uh, more, than Christ. We, even as a pastor, I mean, there's so many conferences out there on how to pastor, on, on doing things and, 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 and apply and just really stewarding the kingdom of God. But I have to be careful that I get so caught up in, in the method, in the approach, in, in this, and, 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 and you, we can get so into the, 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 the this approach that it, you venture into some earthly, worldly wisdom. And, and we forsake worship as a result. We forsake really what this is all about and keeping it simple, all right? So God wants to destroy, here it is, whatever it is that's keeping us from trusting him. Here it is, God wants to destroy whatever it is that's keeping us from truly trusting him, all right? Here it is, let's go. This is my last portion of scripture. All right, might take us a while because there's a few verses here. Uh, but James chapter three, James chapter three, verse 13. Who is wise? Somebody say wise. Who is wise and understanding among you? It's, it's a different perspective. He's talking to the church, he's talking to, he's talking to God's people. And he's like, okay, let's talk about wisdom. Here he's gonna, she's gonna define it. He's gonna, James is gonna break it down for us, okay? Who is wise and understanding among you? Let, let, let's, they, they are, they, they, these two types of wisdom are diametrically opposed. They don't mix. Worldly wisdom does not mix with divine wisdom. Wisdom from below does not mix with wisdom from above, okay? Who is wise and understanding among you? How do we know this? Here it is. Let him show by good conduct, that his works are done in the meekness, meekness, good conduct, the meekness of wisdom. Verse 14, 
But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. So godly wisdom is more about conduct and behavior than it is about knowing how to get something accomplished. Godly wisdom, this is the Bible, is more about showing in your conduct and lifestyle the works that are done in the meekness. Godly wisdom is more about meekness than achieving things, all right? So good conduct, this is what it means in the Greek, good conduct. It says, this is, this is godly wisdom. It means beautiful, all right? As an outward sign of the inward good. It's, hard, it's, it's good kind of noble character, all right? So here's my next point. Godly wisdom is manifesting Christ-likeness. Godly wisdom is manifesting Christ-likeness, all right? Meekness is um, gentle strength. That is wisdom from God's eyes. I know it doesn't, it doesn't make practical sense, but in the kingdom of God, when you are meek and you have a gentle strength because of your confidence in God, you will have all the wisdom that you need. You will have all the knowledge that you need. You, God will make a way for you. Um, it also means, um, you know, expressing uh, a power of God with reserve and gentleness. That's meekness. That you have the power of God, but you, but there's a gentleness. It's gentle strength. Here it is, self-seeking. All right, but it says here, you know, verse 14, but if you have bitter envy, right, and self-seeking in your hearts, that, that's worldly wisdom. Bitter envy, self-seeking, saying things to, to get around the truth so you can get what you want, walking all over people and manipulating and gossiping so you can achieve some sort of thing. It's not of God. God is not pleased with that. It's not the wisdom of God. It's, 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 it's bitter envy and self-seeking, you know, uh, in our hearts. Do not boast and lie against the truth. Here it is, self-seeking in the Greek. It means the seeking. This is interesting in the social media age. Literally means the seeking of followers. That's what it means, self-seeking. The seeking of followers. Acting for one's own gain. This is worldly wisdom. Regardless of the discord and strife it causes. So come on now, we need a coming to the altar moment right now. God, if there's any self-seeking in my heart and my life, Lord, I surrender it. Lord, I put it at your feet. God, I want godly wisdom. Lord, I want the wisdom from above, right? And that, this, is what, this is what worldly wisdom does. Think about how caught up our, even our brothers and sisters in Christ are in everything that's going on in society. They're caught up in something that's not of God when it divides and separates and dishonors and brings strife and discord for the personal gain of something, for the personal agenda. It's worldly, it's not of God. And we need, we need to come back to the altar, get back to worship, get back to the cross, all right? Here we go. It places self-interest ahead of what the Lord declares right. It's worldly wisdom self-interest ahead of what the Lord declares right or what is good for others. It places self-interest above what is good for others. It's worldly wisdom. It's cunning, it's crafty, it's not of God and, 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 and you will get nowhere operating in it, all right? The wisdom of the world is more about technique, control and manipulation to gain an advantage. All right, hallelujah. Wisdom from above is manifesting Christ's likeness to others. It's amazing the wisdom God will give you when your heart is right towards him and your heart is right towards people. That is wisdom. Lord, I wanna treat these people right. Lord, I wanna love people. God, I wanna honor you. That is wisdom. That has eternal rewards. 
that has long-term uh, fruit. That is wisdom. All right, here we go. Last set of verses. James chapter three, verse 15. Let's go on here. This wisdom, here it is, does not descend from above, but is what? Earthly, sensual, demonic. For where, for where envy and self-seeking exists, confusion and every, everything are there. This is the fruit of, of, of ungodly wisdom. Verse 17, but the wisdom, here it is. Here it is, it's a lifestyle. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure. That's wisdom. Purity of heart is wisdom. Purity of heart attain wisdom. Wisdom. Uh, first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, humble, not pushing your agenda in every environment you're in, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Wisdom, wisdom from God is a Christ-like life style. Wisdom from the earth realm, from natural resources, from, and as the scripture says, demonic resources, is a lifestyle to gain an advantage. But in Christ, our lifestyle is to worship and that God would deposit a wisdom on how to navigate this life and loving people and loving him the way he desires us to. All right, so once again, James chapter three, verse 15. Let's just read this again. The wisdom that does not descend from above, or sorry, this wisdom does not descend from above. Isn't that something? Wisdom that, think about it, it descends from above. It's not earthly. It comes from heaven. It descends. That's the wisdom I want. I want that kind of wisdom that comes down, that descends, comes from heaven, from the presence of God. From, from Jesus, from the Holy Spirit, from the word of God. That's the wisdom we want. We want the wisdom that descends from above. The spirit of wisdom is God. It's, 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 it's his nature. It's, it's wisdom is not a technique. It's the nature of God, right? So the wisdom this wisdom does not descend from above, but is. It's talking about earthly wisdom, okay? Selfishness, causing discord, all that. It's earthly, sensual, and demonic. Earthly basically means <laughs> as opposed to heavenly. It's not from above. It's not from above. It's earthly, okay? Sensual. Sensual wisdom is the natural lower aspects of humanity. It gets worse right? It's more, it's carnality, it's flesh, apart from God's inworking of faith, outside of God, outside of the presence of God, not of God, not in his nature. It's, it's human, it's base, it's lower, it's flesh, okay? And it, and, it, and it doesn't produce fruit. It doesn't produce fruit. It's a dead end. It leads to uh, confusion, okay, and evil works, okay? Demonic means influenced by demons, okay? Uh, there we go. Here it is, and it says that, you know, for where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and everything evil thing. When you walk in divine wisdom, it's fruits of righteousness, right? Good conduct, meekness. We were just talking um, uh, uh, during during our, our little uh, transition point here. And we were talking about how meekness, you know, the Bible says the meek will inherit the earth. Wow. So, so my, the Christ likeness, meekness, that's basically meekness, you know, it's, 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 it's gentle strength. It's strength um, under control, right? It's, it's power, but it's not, it's not egotistical, right? But so the meek inherit the earth. Think about that, that it is our 
Christ-like behavior, our it's it's Christ in us. It's our how we how we approach God that really matters, and how we approach people that really matters. And it's the meek that obtain. It's not the crafty. It's not the scheming. It's the meek. It's the meek, right? So here it is. So for where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion, 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 right? And this is the environment of confusion. And then we're going to pray. But check it out. Cannot, this is what confusion means. It means cannot stand or remain steady. Uh, when we operate in worldly wisdom, when there's some ulterior motive, some approach towards something that is not submitted to the Lord, not in worship, not in love for people, but it's coming from us because of our bitterness or envy or jealousy or insecurity or whatever it is, or anxiety, whatever it is, we're operating in such a way outside of God. It says it, it, it confusions there, which means we cannot stand or remain steady or unsettled and stable. So confusion is an environment that it may, operating in this worldly wisdom makes us unstable, okay? It's instability bringing disorder and disturbance. It means to be out of control. And so we uh, wanna operate in the simplicity of wisdom, in the simplicity of divine wisdom that God has promised that he would give us wisdom and understanding and counsel and knowledge and simply first and foremost that we approach everything in an honor for God and an honor to God and that Lord help me to, to make sure that what I do is honoring you and blessing you and Lord help me to do this for the betterment of people, to help them, to, to, to help, to serve, to love and right there, wisdom, everything we have need of is the result of our approach toward God and other people. It's, it's, our, it's our behavior in Christ. It's the fruit of the spirit that God honors. Amen? Hallelujah. Let me pray for you. Father, I just thank you, Lord, for everybody. I pray right now for the spirit of wisdom. I pray right now, God, if anybody is joining in, can, can pinpoint things of them operating in worldly wisdom, and craftiness, and, and things, and just the motive and approach, or maybe they're experiencing it from somebody else. I pray right now in Jesus' name, Father God, for healing, for deliverance, for restoration in those areas. I pray in Jesus' name, Father God, that we would operate in a supernatural wisdom from God by His Spirit and His Word. Lord, I pray that our, our attitude, our words, our plans, our approach, our intents, our planning, Father, everything in this life, Lord, I pray that we all would submit it to the Lord Jesus Christ and let everything we do be done unto you, God, and not unto man. Lord, let it be an act of worship. And Lord, as a result of that, Lord, we just receive supernatural divine wisdom that's from above. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, everybody, if you're out there and you have not confessed Jesus to be Lord of your life, now is your opportunity to come to him, give your life to him, uh, turn from your sin. Turn to him. Ask him to forgive you. Hold nothing back. The Bible says that if you confess your sins, if you confess them, he's faithful and just to forgive you, to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Man, you could be saved right now by grace. Just, just through your faith. It's, salvation is yours in Christ. So if, so if you want to do that, I encourage you to do it right now. And just pray this simple prayer after me. Simply say, Jesus, I come to you a sinner. I receive your righteousness. I receive your grace. Forgive me of my sin. I turn from my sin and I choose to worship you. Jesus, be Lord of my life. I am saved in Jesus' name, amen. Congratulations. Praise the Lord. It is that simple. It is that simple. We are saved by grace through faith. That not of works. It is not of works, lest any of us should boast. It is all because of His grace. So be encouraged today. I want to encourage you, if you want um, a little Bible study tool, um, uh, it's only, it's a seven-day Bible study. It's, it's, um, 
It's about just taking some simple steps with God in your journey and simply text the uh, word GROW uh, to 323-405-3232 and we will text you the link to it so it can help you in your walk with God and growing in your walk with God. And so be encouraged. God bless. Time to sow, give into the house of God. Just want to say thank you to everybody for giving, for sowing into Hopeland Church. Um, we appreciate it. We're thankful for it. We love to do this thing called um, church and um, leading uh, this particular community. Um, my wife and I love this. We love what we do. And we're thankful for people that believe in what God is doing here enough to um, serve and to be a part of it and to give. So thank you. And so as you give today, if you would like to give, you can simply text um, Hopeland to 77977. Um, that's the way to give here. Um, and here we go. I just want to share a scripture here. Uh, in Matthew chapter 6, uh, verse 9, In this manner, therefore, pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's kind of talking about what we were just preaching about, about worship, honoring God first, put him first, seek first the kingdom. That is, that is our heart and our approach toward God. Is He is first. It's worship first. Thank him first, right? And then it says here, verse, then give us this day our daily bread. You know, forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So I just want to share that and just highlight the verse right in the middle of that model prayer is um, give us, verse 11, give us this day our daily bread. And I just want to encourage you as you place God first and, and uh, worship him in every aspect of your life and giving your tithe and your offering is, is a form of that. It's not the only way to worship. It's not even the only way to give. There's plenty of other ways that we worship God and give. But this is one way and uh, we're thankful for it. Um, but that the point here is that God said, you know, worship him first in, in, this, in this model prayer. And then it says, give us this day our daily bread. And God's going to provide for your needs. It's Jehovah Jireh. You know, it means uh, that he is the Lord who provides. And so I want to encourage you uh, as you give to continue to put your faith and trust and faith in God for him to cover you, keep you, protect you, and provide for you. So let me pray for you. I want to pray over the offering today. Father, I thank you for every seed that's being sown. Thank you for every gift that's being given. I thank you for every sacrifice that's being placed on the altar of worship right now and it's being sown into this house. Lord, I thank you for every tithe, the first tenth, those that have said, man, I'm going to bring at minimum the first tenth of my increase, the first tenth of what comes underneath my authority. I bring that first to the Lord. So Lord, I just thank you and I praise you, God, for all of these gifts and, and sacrifices and the tithe. I pray, Lord, that you would give us this day our daily bread. And Lord, to you be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, church. God bless you. All right, announcements for everybody out there. Uh, check it out. We've got a couple things going on. The first thing is this. If you have any prayer requests, we want to know what they are. We want to pray for you. And it's simple. You simply just text your prayer request to us. Text it to 323-405-3232. Prayer request, praise report. You want to praise God for something? Let us know. We want to celebrate with you. Any prayer request at all, you can text us any time of day at all. It doesn't matter. Text us. We're going to pray for you. Put it on our, we'll put it on our prayer list. I'll have our leaders, our community be praying for you. Once again, for prayer, a praise. Prayer requests, praise report, text 323-405-3232. Just text it in. That's all you got to do. Super simple. We're going to pray for you and we're going to celebrate what God's doing in your life. 
Also, the next thing, we have team night coming up. Team night is coming up. This is what you gotta do. Serve team out there. Whole plan, serve team. You wanna be a part of team night, but this is what you gotta do. You gotta text. We text everything around here. That's how we do it. You gotta text serve to 323-405-3232. Text serve and fill out the form on there. You're gonna get a little form. You need to put your address on it because we're gonna mail you something. Can't tell you what it is. It's a secret. Shh, not gonna tell you. We're not gonna tell anybody. Pedro in here, who's helping the film and edit today, he asked me, he wanted me to tell him. I'm like, no, I can't tell you. If I tell you, it's not a secret, bro. So put your address, we're gonna mail you something. Team night's coming up on Zoom. Peace. Check one, check two. There is divine wisdom and earthly wisdom. Which one do you want to operate in this life? Okay, cool. Go UCLA Bruins. It's offering time. What's up, everybody? It's offering time.